So we ought to have a bit of a conversation about what M hypotheses look like. And I, I think that some of them are obvious, and some of them are very cryptic. Um, for example, if we have a newly arrived invader, we may be able simply to draw a buffer based on you know, the maximum dispersal distance. This is what Tommy and I did in our red palm rule analysis last year. Um, where we get into complications is where we have an established species that's been there a long time, and we have to think about, okay, how do we at least make a reasonable assumption? Okay, down the line, I think we're going to be building dynamic niche and movement models that will, that will take all of this into account and essentially derive them from real data. We're not there yet. So uh, I wanted to just go through some examples with you. And so I made up some data, OK? Which is to say, I made a map of Africa. I didn't make that up. Uh, this is with ecoregions. And you'll see polygons that more or less make sense to your understanding of the geography of the continent. Uh, there's also a DEM. You really can't see the color map. There's a little detail that I haven't learned about QGIS, so I made you a very crummy DTM. So let's mainly use this, and I think we'll be able to essentially talk our way through this. Okay? So I just want you to, you to see the reasoning. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to be biogeographers, and we're going to try to come up with a hypothesis of an area. And it may well be wrong. It's okay if it's wrong, but it has to be explicit. The assumptions that are not okay are the implicit, unstated assumptions. The assumptions that are okay are the explicit ones, because somebody can always come back and change them. Uh, so essentially, we're going to read the tea leaves. Or my, my old grandmother, when you drank coffee at her house, the coffee was grounds boiled directly in the in, in the water that became your coffee. And so you would drink your coffee and then turn over the cup and the grounds would kind of dribble down the side of the cup and onto the saucer. And she would look at that and she would say, oh, town, you're going to be very rich and you're going to have lots of children. <laughs> she was actually wrong on both, so, uh, but she did it with the best of intentions. So we're going to read the coffee grounds for the for my made up species here. So let's start with a very easy species. This one is for you, Rabai. Uh, this, this species that is on Madagascar. And I'll tell you about endemism for this species, okay? But essentially, you're seeing points that are fairly representative of each of the distributions of my species. So we have this species that's distributed across Madagascar, north, south, east, west not found anywhere outside of Madagascar. It doesn't seem like there are any major sectors of Madagascar that are somehow off limits for it. So what we can do is for example. I'm starting with the easy thing. Why not just say that it has evolved on Madagascar, that's why it's endemic to Madagascar. It clearly has access to most or all of the island. So you can, in good conscience, see that your M hypothesis is the island of Madagascar. Okay, really easy. So then, look at my light green species. Okay? And yes, I purposefully put a cross on all of the limits of Africa, all of the extremes. And if the species were like that and they were endemic to Africa, now what's your hypothesis? What's an, an obvious first assumption? Come on, take a shot at it. Is it in South America? No. Is it in Asia or the Arabian Peninsula? No. 
Is it in Europe? No. So what's a hypothesis as far as the area that's been accessible to it? So, thank you. Um, so we're basically saying no, it couldn't jump across the Straits of Gibraltar, it couldn't go out through the Sinai Peninsula, and it doesn't like to swim. Okay? So that's a very simple, much of what I'm saying about M is stupidly simple. Okay? Now, let's take some harder examples. Here's one, these white crosses. straightforward. 
his opinion or his viewpoint is you're not going to be right. So why are you doing this? And my answer is, well, I have need to run some models. And no, I'm not going to be right, but I'm going to be less wrong. And I'm going to be explicit. Okay? So, the last example is simply, what if for my like green species, what if there were also across here, and in India, and in Australia, and in the Americas? We kind of have two options here. We have evidence that the species is not endemic to Africa, but maybe our sampling is limited to that. Okay. So that's one of these occasions where we may bring in S considerations and not just M considerations when we're doing that study. So this is this is just a very short, I'm gonna stop now, I can answer questions or I can pass the baton on to the next set crew. But uh, this is just designed to take a little bit of the mystery away from, from this outlining the camp. All, all I want you to do is make a hypothesis, thinking about what you know about the natural history of the species, thinking about what you know about the geography of the region you're working in. You invent a narrative. Okay, you know, remember this narrative. Somehow or another, my species, my white species, got across the Dahomey Gap. Maybe it has very good dispersal abilities, it can just fly. Or maybe it walked, but it walked during a period in which a human forest species, a human forest species could walk from Central Africa to West Africa. Okay? So you invent a narrative, you state it explicitly, you say it. The study area was limited to the area within 600 kilometers of known populations in view of the dispersal ability citation, or to the human forest regions of Africa buffered by X number of kilometers. But if you invent a narrative based on the natural history of the species, based on the geography, and you state it explicitly. Right, but it's less wrong. 